Warning, this video totally contains spoilers for The Invisible Man. So if you haven't seen The Invisible Man yet, don't watch this video. And if you watch it anyway, don't be a crybaby about it. Ooh, it's scary movie time. Oh my gosh, you guys, I just got back from watching The Invisible Man like a week ago. <laughs> I meant to do this the night I watched it, but it was like 12 a.m. and I just, I didn't feel like it. But I'm going to do a review as I remember seeing it. So buckle up because we're going to go through the Invisible Man. <laughs> okay, so when I was approached to watch this movie, guys, here's what happened. Sylvia Nix texted me out of the blue and asked if I want to go see the Invisible Man. So I thought, I got nothing to do tonight. Why not? And let me just tell you, I came to this movie with absolutely no expectations whatsoever, which I think us all should do. I've sat through at least 16 different Invisible Man movies, and they're usually all the same. You know, all the, like, tropes that are going to happen, like, you know, the toilet paper wrapped around the face with the sunglasses, the whole bit. Well, that didn't happen in this movie, okay? First off, if you watch the trailer, you essentially have seen the whole movie. But there's a few things they threw in there to, like, you know, surprise you. Here we go. So we start, right? We're in this fabulous mega mansion, like in the Alps somewhere. It's fantastic. I want this house. They live in like, I don't know what it is about rich people, but they always live in like glass houses where you can like see everything. And it's just like, I can never be that comfortable with myself or that filthy rich where I could just walk around naked and not care if anyone saw it. But she is in a full on bunker, this girl, right? And I guess she's in like an abusive relationship. We're kind of given hints about it because she wakes up in a bed in a dark storm. I don't know if it was storming. I don't think it was storming, actually. I think it was just dark. Anyways, she wakes up in a bed, right? And she's just like looking over, giving the full what for, like, is he asleep? And we're like, oh, is she going to make her great escape? And she is. So she sneaks out, right? And she's like going through her bathroom and trying to like be quiet as a mouse, right? And she's like jiggling, like she has like this little pill bottle that she drugged her boyfriend with, her fiance, boyfriend, fiance, husband. Husband. He's her husband. Yeah, he's her husband. And it's like, you know, full on, like, you know, sleeping pills. He is out, but she's still creeping around silence as a mouse. Like, had it been me and I drugged him, I'm like, this, I'm just going to walk out freely as I want. But she's still, like, making sure not to trip up anything, right? She's covering up cameras. She's burying her footprints, everything. All until she has to say goodbye to the dog, and this is always going to do you win. This is why you don't have pets, folks. She goes to say bye to the dog and take off its collar. She sets off the car alarm. Bolts it out of this place you know, running barefoot in the snow. It wasn't snowing. It was just, it was, it was just dirt. Running barefoot in the dirt, right? And she like crawls over this big bunker wall because he lives in like a bunker, right? And she falls down onto the street. And when she gets to the road, like the dirt road outside the woods, like everything girl, it's like escape from Attica. She is like running for her life, right? And she has a cell phone too. He was allowing her to have a cell phone, which is like, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. If you're going to try and control somebody, don't give them a cell phone. Are you stupid? Are you new to this? Anyways, she has a cell phone and she's texting her sister and her sister is like wait to pick her up, but she finally gets in the car with her sister and her sister's giving her a whole what for like, girl, what are you doing? It is late at night. I have to work tomorrow morning. I pick up the kids and she's just like, drive. Why don't you drive? And it's always that moment in the movies where you're just like, why aren't they driving? And she's just like, okay, I'm going to go. And she's about to floor it. Right. And husband comes up with it. Glass all over her face, all over her hair. Ugh. And then they floor it and he's like pissed off. The movie begins. Okay, so it's like two weeks later. I think it was two weeks. Anyways, she's sitting in a house, right? She is like all, you know, worrisome of the world. She won't even go to the mailbox. That's how terrified of the outside world she is. She is shell-shocked. She has PTSD. She has the whole thing. So she's inside her house of her friend, right? I think he's a cop. I think he's a cop. Yeah, he's a cop. And he has this daughter, right? She's adorable. Single dad, raising a daughter, cop. He's somehow friends with her sister, maybe, or they somehow know each other. I wasn't really paying attention. Ernie fell asleep next to me. So essentially, you know, we are setting up that she's now living in this little suburb, right? And she's trying to, like, repatch her life. And he's trying to make her brave to, like, you know, get so brave to even go out to the mailbox by herself. Anyways, her sister comes and her sister's giving her the full what for. And like, she won't even let her sister talk, right? Like, she is that much, she's like that girl, you know? All of her problems matter, you know? Blah, blah, blah. I was in a bad relationship. Blah, blah. I'm repairing my life. But she won't let her sister get a word in edgewise. And when she finally does, she lets her know that the old guy kicked it, right? You know, he's dead. Her husband's dead. And she's just like, wait, what? And she doesn't know what to think. And she's just like, freedom dead she's like trying to make the connections but none of the things are like none of the roads are sinking with each other she can't land the plane in the hudson but she finally puts two and two together and realizes oh wait i don't have to worry about anything anymore flash forward we are sitting across from beta cuck brother who is going over the will with her 
Well, we don't find out he's the brother till later in this. He's her. He's he's Adrian's brother. That's her husband's name, Adrian. Let's give him a name. His name's Adrian. I don't know what wife's name was. I think it might have been Jessica or Veronica. We'll call her Jessica Veronica. That's what we're gonna call her now. So Jessica Veronica is sitting there across from Beta Cook brother, and he's telling her like, "Hey, you know, you're in this will. You got a large sum of money, and you can do whatever you want with it, given that you don't get arrested." And I'm thinking to myself, I've seen a lot of these movies, and I watched a lot of soap operas. Nothing's ever that nice. So immediately I'm invested. Like, okay, I can't wait for this to hit the fan. I know she's going to fall down this hill and she's going to slide all the way down the bottom and I can't wait to see it. But she's thinking, okay, this is great. You know, he left me some money. I can turn a negative into a positive. So she does. She sets up a little trust for her friend's daughter to go to fashion design school, which is like waste of money, honestly. Hopefully she can write that off on her taxes. So things are all going wonderful, right? And almost immediately things start to go south. She starts experiencing things, you know, like almost like she's being haunted, like she's sleeping in her bed at night and like she can feel a presence there, but she can't see them. I'm like, ooh, I love this already. And if you saw the trailer, you essentially know all the scares, but it's it's totally worth it. Still go see it. It'll surprise you. So she's like sitting around. She's like, oh my God, I'm being haunted. I am a terrified white woman. And I was living, right? Just the full bit. So she's like looking around and no one's believing her. They're like, girl, you was crazy. And she's just like, no, no, I'm for real. I'm for real. He's really there. He's still alive. And I'm like, girl, come on. We get it. You know, you know, you've been through a lot, but it's, it's not all about you. And I felt that energy too, because I felt that way too, even though I had more information than they did, but I'm still just like, Jessica, Amber, you're being a bit much. So cut to, she's like alone in the house again and she starts seeing stuff going missing, right? Hands of bacon start on fire, the whole bit, like poltergeisty kind of shit, right? She is so sure that this guy is still alive. And what was I gonna say? What else happened? I gotta catch up, okay, yeah. So yeah, it's like that for like the next couple minutes, like maybe 20 minutes, it's like, you know, full on ghost story, you know, paranormal activity kind of bit, until eventually she gets to a point where she's exploring the house, right? She is so certain that this guy is still alive and no one's believing her and like everyone's cutting her off. She apparently wrote an awful email to her sister that she never even wrote that told her sister she wished she was never born and that she ruined her life and that she's suffocating her. She is just going through it. She cannot handle it right now, but she knows this bastard is still alive and he is with her because he was apparently like some sort of mega engineer of like eyeglasses or something. It was really, it was like moon logic science. I couldn't quite understand what exactly he did, but it had to do with cameras and stuff. Either way, she thought, you know, he found some way to make himself invisible so that he can terrorize her and fake his own death, which is like soap opera 101, I'm here for it. So she's exploring the house and she is so certain that this bastard is still here. So she has the bright idea to call Adrian's cell phone because she keeps finding stuff around the house that couldn't have been there unless somebody was at Adrian's house, which is like all the way in the Swiss Alps or something, right? So. They also never really established where we were. Like, suddenly we're in the suburbs, he lives all the way to Swiss Alps. People got places really quickly, but you know, it's movie logic, we just throw it out the window. But she has the bright idea to call his cell phone, and when she does, she hears his phone going off inside the house. We're like, oh my god! It's like when a stranger calls, right? She's like, girl, get out of the house, you're not alone. But no, she gets up and she like, hears it ringing, she hears it ringing above her, she's on the second story, mind you. She gets down the little ladder from the attic and she starts climbing up it. If you saw the trailer, you already know it's coming. But you know, she's like calling the phone and she sees it ringing in a dark corner like, oh my God, this is getting good, right? And she goes and she goes up to this little phone and she picks it up and then suddenly the phone says, surprise. I'm like, ah, oh my God. This movie really started to pick up from now. I like made noise and Ernesto woke up and it was great because, you know, this is exactly the point in the trailer where they stop telling you what happens. So she like freaks out naturally and she starts running back and like she tries to go down and she's so certain that somebody is there. So like she's like looking down at the like lower landing from the top of the attic, looking down through the view, and she's like, oh my god, 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 and we're, I'm feeling it with her too, and she's like, like cans of paint up there. I know people store paint in their attic. That seems a little. You want to put that in a garage, but anyway, that it we needed it for this scene to happen. So she sees paint there, and she has the bright idea to throw paint on him, and suddenly it's like a hollow man situation. You see the full silhouette of the guy, you know, full silhouette of a man, right? And she's freaking out. And the person like jumps off and runs off and she's just like, oh my God, I was so right. And so she's like freaking out. She gets downstairs and she's looking around and she grabs a knife and she's like paranoid, right? Water's going and she can see paint in the sink and she knows somebody is here. So she has a knife. She's ready for everything. She gets grabbed by her throat, right? And she's like fighting him off, fighting him off. 
they get the knife out of her hand and it's really, really good stuff. Like the special effects in this were really effective. I would have like fully got out like the baby powder or like, you know, baking powder and just start throwing that everywhere, you know, putting cereal all over the floor just so you can see footprints, you know where you're going, ready to duke somebody. But no, you know, she apparently has never had any fight training, so it's fine, you know. She manages to subdue him with a bull and then run off and try and get help. But, you know, it's you know, a horror movie. They manage to get away. And when person comes home, like guy that owns the house, he's like, what the f you ruined my house. And so she's just like, she knows now, like fully Adrian is back and he is here to mess me up. And what else happened? How do we get from there to there? Okay, so the movie ends up getting crazier and crazier. I'm forgetting a huge chunk of it, which is fine because that means you can go watch it. We're gonna skip ahead and she is having dinner, right? She's like having a really rough time, like Adrian's messing around with her. It's like that for like a good 20, 15 minutes. And it gets to the point where it gets really tense in the house she's staying in because she accidentally, by, well, she doesn't do it, Adrian does it, where she's having a tender moment with this guy's daughter, right? The really cute, adorable daughter that's going to fashion school, waste of time, waste of money, but still, I digress. She's having a cute, bonding, tender moment. They're talking about having a girl's night and eating cake. I don't know what snapped in Adrian's mind, but he heard cake and he backhanded that girl, invisible backhand, the girl, and she's screaming, crying, and she blamed her for it. Amber Jessica slapped me, and Guy tells her to get out of her house immediately because he's going to protect his daughter, right? And I was just like, I kicked her out the second I found out she had issues. Girl, you're a lot more tolerant than I am. <laughs> but no, no, no. So she's like, you know, lost and discouraged. She doesn't have a place to go. So she's having dinner with her sister to try and figure out her life, right? And she's trying to explain to her sister what's going on. And they're having this nice little dinner and they're being kind of rude to the waiter, which is just like, I hate that. Oh my God. The waiter leaves and they leave their place settings there. And she's about to tell her sister what's all going on. And suddenly a knife lifts up out of the ground and slices her sister's throat. And immediately I'm like, what the it just happened. That was the most tense moment in the movie. Like it was the scariest part because everything else is pretty predictable. The pretty predictable jump scare. But this part, I was like, holy shit, what just happened? It was like that moment in um um um. What's the one I watched? The Midsummer one where the people jump off the cliff. That where you're just like, well, I didn't see that coming. So yeah, everyone's looking at her like, oh my god, oh my god, she just killed somebody. And at this is the point where. I had to like really let go of movie logic because this is the problem where you watch a lot of Murder, She Wrote, where you suddenly start to dissect everything. You get like Jessica Fletcher brain and you're just like, I don't know if this is plausible or if people couldn't just look at a camera and prove this didn't happen. Like a lot of this voice happening now, like you start to dissect everything and you ruin the whole movie yourself. But I caught myself mid sentence and you know suspended my disbelief and like okay we're 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 doing this let's just abandon all hope you who under here cut to amber jessica is in a mental asylum now we don't know how much time is left but she has really greasy hair bad skin you know dirt on her fingernails the whole bit she is inside of a mental institution and adrian is in there too and he is with her right Oh, I didn't explain what happened. So in her midst of her trying to figure out what's going on, before her sister got her throat slit, she went to Adrian's house, right? And she said hi to the dog. It was a really cute moment. And she goes exploring, right? And she goes inside Adrian's lab, his secret lair lab that's like in the basement. And she goes snooping around and she finds a suit. Like she pressed a couple buttons on an iPad and a suit starts to appear, right? And it's a suit made entirely out of camera lenses, which again, it's like movie logic, moon logic is all going on right now. I'm like that, how does that work? Uh, f it. Just f it. Who cares? Just enjoy the movie. And she's like, oh my God, I have proof. He has an invisible suit. So she grabs this suit, right? And she hides it in the closet for safekeeping. You know, we're going to come back to that later. You know, put a pin in that. We're coming back to that. Flash forward back to the mental institution, right? She's like, you know, fully spread out in the bed, spread eagle. You know, she's fully crazy. Adrian's just like, surprise. We never see Adrian at this point either. We know what he looks like. He could be ugly. He could be attractive. We only saw him that one scene in the beginning where you see the side of his face. And that wasn't enough for me. I needed more. But I guess that was like a tactic to make sure that we didn't like sympathize with our killer. Like, you know, a Ted Bundy kind of situation. Like, oh my God, he's killing people, but he's so hot. I mean, I guess I can forgive him. He's so cute. It's, it's fine. They didn't want any of that, right? They wanted to make sure you thought he was fully a villain. Amber Jessica is like strapped down to a gurney bed in the mental institution, right? And Adrian's messing with her and she is plotting in her mind right now because she knows that there's going to be a rainstorm coming. And she knows that this is her last opportunity to make sure that she can escape. Oh, and somewhere down the line, she was pregnant too. We found that out too. She's pregnant. So she's strapped to a gurney. She's in the mental institution, greasy hair, dirty fingernails, and she's pregnant. So she's got a whole lot going on right now. But she's plotting. Now, pregnancy brain is going. She knows she can plot her escape. So, rainstorm comes and she decides that 
in order to make sure that Adrian can't have her anymore, she's going to take herself out of the equation. I hope that was just a ruse. I hope that wasn't her actual plan. But no, she's in a shower bed, right? She's still a pen. She's like about to slit her wrist. She gets real deep in there too, right? Like she's slitting them the completely wrong way, mind you. But she's like <laughs> giving you the full girl interrupted wrist slit, right? Adrian stops her and she uses that to like start jabbing him in the suit, right? And it's like, ah! It's like being in public school. It's fabulous. So she gets that. She escapes. The guard comes in like, what the going on his suit's malfunctioning he's seen like a glitchy man like glitchy cameraman he's like what the and this is where it starts to get a little bit like a resident evil movie where she runs out and she's like going through the white hallways and security guards are coming like a, a norm absorbent amount of security guards to be in a mental institution this late at night but they needed them there to be fodder for adrian to like show off superman powers like <laughs> he's knocking people's legs out he's shooting people he's kneecapping people oh my god it's fully like a Resident Evil movie. And they didn't really explain what Adrian did or why he's so strong, but he suddenly turns into like the Incredible Hulk. Like he's knocking out everybody. She manages to escape into the rainstorm, right? This is how you know he's invisible, where you see the silhouette of a man. Like I see a silhouette of a man in the rainstorm. You don't see any of that. So that kind of irritated me. I wanted that shot, we didn't get that. Anyways, she's running through there. They're having their great showdown. And you think, okay, this movie is going on for a while. No, it has to be over soon, right? It's not. So. He tells her that she better watch out because he's going to go after that sweet little girl that we saw in the beginning that's going to fashion school, which is a waste of time, waste of money, but I digress. He's going to go after her and he's going to make her pay die. Yeah. Yeah, that's what he meant. He's going to kill her. So she's just like, oh no, I care about this person. And so he runs off. She steals a car. She goes back to her cop friend's house to save the girl. Um, what else happened? Huh. I probably should record this the day after I watched it. Oh, right, right, right. This is the back at the house, right? And she is like, you know, shooting the guy. No, no, she doesn't do that. The daughter is there in her bed. He comes in, terrorizes her. She pepper sprays him, which somehow works, even though he's in a camera suit. And she's like running away and he's choking her. Her father comes in and tries to fight him off and ends up getting beat up. Okay, so Amber Jessica comes in at this point, right? And she has a fire extinguisher out of nowhere. And she sprays the guy down and then picks up a gun and shoots him a bunch of times. She, like, runs up to him and it's a Scooby-Doo moment, right? We're going to reveal who the big guy is. Who is the killer? She takes off the mask. And it's a Beta Cup brother. Which is weird. But okay. Well, I'm, I'm going with it. They're trying to give me a swerve, I guess. So Beta Cup brother is the one that died. And he's the one that's been killing people and terrorizing people. But this doesn't gel with Amber Jessica. She's a little smarter than that. You know, she's still got pregnancy brain. They go back to Adrian's house, like a SWAT team's fully in there, and they're like going through everything, and they break down a like dummy wall, and you see Adrian there, bound and blindfolded. Or maybe he wasn't blindfolded. I can't remember, but he's bound, hands in front of him, and he's in like a dark undercellar, and he's just like, oh my God, I've been here for weeks. Help me. And then Adrian's alive still. His brother faked his death so that he could terrorize Amber Jessica for some reason. And this doesn't gel with Amber Jessica because it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And it didn't make a lot of sense to me either because I know all this information too. And then we cut to Amber Jessica. You know, she's free to go. This, the murders have been proven not to be her. She's going to meet up with Adrian one last time because she just needs some clarity, right? She's like Kim Petras. She needs clarity. So she goes to his house, this beautiful like Swiss Alps see-through glass house, right? And she's, you know, sitting down having a lovely dinner and she's talking with him and she's straight up like she's straight up wearing a wire like her cop friends in that like back alley waiting for him to say something, right? Because she knows he committed all this. Like she can see through him. Like she's like, you're a man. I know for a fact you're lying. So they're having dinner, right? And he's being really, really like, you know, wishy-washy about the whole situation, right? Until finally she hears him say one thing to her. And he said, what was it? Bingo? Surprise. Surprise. It was surprise. He said surprise. And she was like, <laughs> Jessica Fletcher moment goes off, right? Epiphany. She goes off and she's like, you know what? I got to like powder my nose or something. So we're looking at him right across the table, just waiting for her to come back, you know, fully tapping the fingers because he knows he's like, I got this. Shit. Like, I'm getting away with all of this stuff. She comes back, right? And we can't see her, but we see him suddenly pick up a knife and slit his own throat. And then he falls to the floor dying. 
and she comes right back out, right? And she's in full clothes, right? She's like wondering, like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. She's putting on a scene because she knows she's being recorded and she knows where all the cameras are. So she knows she can fake his death and she'll get away with it. So she goes into a corner where you can't see her and she just wumbles out. Surprise. Full super bitch mode. I was like, oh my God, go Amber Jessica or whatever your name is. I'm totally on your for I'm totally on your side now. I love you now. So um, Adrian dies. And the cop friend sees completely through her because she was dumb enough to put the invisible suit inside of her purse. Like, she didn't cover it with a towel or nothing. I would have stole, like, a silverware set and put that on top, right, just so you wouldn't see it. But no, no, no. She is walking out with, a fur, like, a full purse full of an invisible man suit that everyone knows is, like, you know, I'm going to kill people suit. And cop's just like, what are you doing? She's just like, it looks like he committed suicide. What do you think it was? And he's just like, crazy I guess he committed suicide. And then the movie ended. And I have to say, I enjoyed this movie a whole lot more than I thought I would. Like, I came in there with zero expectations, and I highly recommend all of you do, because if you come up with no expectations whatsoever, you're going to be very, very happy. And if you're completely ignorant to all the Invisible Man franchises before this, you're going to be very happy, because they weren't very good. But I have to say, my final thoughts were, whoever this actress is, Go you, girl. I feel like I've seen her before. Like, she's in Handmaid's Tale or something, but I was living for her. She's not the prettiest. She is not the prettiest. But I think that's also how I, like, got invested in her acting and stuff, because I was just, like, so invested in her welfare. Other than that, I mean, Adrian was kind of hot, so I can understand why they didn't show him right away, because we would have, like, sympathized with him immediately. It would have been like that Zac Efron Ted Bundy movie where, like, everyone's just like, now that you mention it, Ted Bundy's kind of hot. <laughs> they didn't want any of that to happen. So I completely understand why they didn't show until the end. But yeah, I would recommend The Invisible Man. It was a lot better than that last movie I saw, the Quentin Tarantino one. Oh my God. If you guys want me to do more of these, let me know. I would be happy to do more film reviews now that I have time to do them. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, and scene. Click here and watch me style a Wigs Ball Venet A. Or watch my last film review. Come on, click it. You know you want to. If you don't click it, I'll put on a camera suit and terrorize you. So click it.